Hey guys, just before we kick this thing off, I want to clarify that this is a review solely focusing on the single player aspect of Battlefront 2. When it comes to multiplayer, although I'm enjoying it, I do have some different opinions and some different thoughts about where the game should be and where it should move from here. But I want to give you guys my isolated opinions on purely the single player part of Battlefront 2, because that for me is one of the most exciting parts of the game. And it's definitely the big thing that was missing from the previous release from EA. So I really wanted to isolate on that, give you guys my opinions after playing through the whole thing, and just clarify that this doesn't reflect my entire opinions on the game as a whole, especially when it comes to some of the decisions that have been made around multiplayer. But without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an official Musel campaign review for Star Wars Battlefront 2. About a week ago, I flew over to San Francisco out to the EA headquarters as the next step in my Star Wars Battlefront 2 saga. We've gone everything from the earliest betas, playing it all the way back at E3, then at Gamescom, then in the beta, where we just destroyed on the streets as Darth Maul. And now, finally, I am here for the game's release. And long story short, we spent about two days trapped in a room playing through the entire Battlefront 2 campaign. And today, I'm going to try and give you my almost spoiler-free review on that entire experience. There is one spoiler, which unfortunately happens in about the first hour of the campaign, which, because it's in so much of the footage, I just, I can't completely cut out. So if you're doing a completely spoiler-free review, you might want to leave the video right now. But for the rest of you, let's do this. Now, if there's one thing that I look for in a Star Wars game, it's those big cinematic moments. And on that front, Battlefront 2 blows it out of the park. The Frostbite engine has always been amazing at two things. Gorgeous graphics and just insane scale. Those two things come together so, so well in Battlefront 2 to create some pretty awesome moments. Whether you're flying through an intense space battle or watching a capital ship land right in front of you, there are a few times in this campaign when I didn't feel like I was genuinely inside the Star Wars universe. Now, one other thing which I really appreciated, some of you guys might not care about this quite as much as I do, but it was the game's ability to have these seamless transitions between different forms of gameplay. So one second, I could be running around on the surface of a planet, blowing things up, shooting laser beams at people, and in the next, I could be hopping inside a fighter and without a single loading screen, take off and suddenly I'm engaging in space combat, which just felt so amazing. And I know I'm sick of saying this word, but just increase that immersion that much more. It's beautiful. Is this what happiness feels like? One of my biggest concerns when I'm playing a shooter campaign is that it's going to turn into a mindless eight hour long series of hallways filled with enemies who I immediately gun down before moving on to the next room where it all just gets rinsed and repeated and happens all over again. Now, I'm really happy to say that Battlefront 2 does a pretty good job of making the gameplay feel as fresh and as fun as possible across its five hour campaign. The typical shoot 'em up elements definitely make up the majority of the game. However, these are spaced out by some really great fighter pilot, stealth, and hero moments. As well as some less great ones, like spending 10 minutes wandering a bar as Han Solo looking for some guy called Paldora. Listen, pal, I'm looking for a friend named Paldora. You look just like a friend of mine, name of Paldora. Hey, Mr. Paldora. I'm Imperial Specialist Ralseus Paldora. It is a pleasure to finally meet you. Now, I'm hard to please. So while I love the constant attempts to allow for fresh new gameplay, there were a few points where it became a little bit frustrating, and I'll quickly explain why. Immersion is everything for me in a campaign game. Not only in Star Wars, but pretty much in any universe. When I play a campaign, I really like to play it almost exclusively as one character because it really lets me get involved in their story and really connect with who they are, become invested in what their struggle is and ultimately just enjoy the game a heap more. Battlefront 2 has this weird habit of occasionally just switching who you were playing to a totally separate character, which was always one of the heroes from the campaign. Now, I actually didn't mind this when it moved us over to a hero like Luke or Kylo Ren, as the lightsaber combat was a really nice break from just shooting people with other laser guns, but when it changed you to just a hero like Han Solo, who just also uses laser guns, it left me kind of wondering why that was even necessary. In some missions, Aiden is actually at the same place doing the same mission, but you're just playing as another character, which just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. 
But hey, I'm a stickler for immersion. So for other players, it might just be a really awesome chance to experience playing as all your favorite heroes from the movies. Now, obviously this wouldn't be a full review without addressing the topic of glitches. Loved by YouTubers, but hated by most normal people. A glitchy campaign can suck as it just destroys the immersion you'd otherwise be looking for in a game like this. Well, after a full playthrough, I am happy to say, and a little bit sad on the YouTube side, that I had an almost entirely glitchless run. There was one small thing which happened, and to be honest, it had me laughing harder than almost any of the other parts of the campaign. Right as we were defending a landing zone to allow a bunch of our friends to escape, this one guy rocked up a little bit late and gets left behind on the sands of Jakku. Poor dude. Alright guys, so for the majority of this video, I haven't really dropped any spoilers at all. I wanted to make this totally spoiler free, but I can't end this video without talking about one thing that just bugged the absolute crap out of me. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, then, then maybe just... Click that button in the top left hand corner and it'll take you to the part after I've finished talking about this one part of the game. So in three, two, one. Okay, you lost a chance. Here we go. Spoiler time. The game literally opens with Aiden deliberately getting herself captured by a rebel cruiser. Where she's taken on board, proceeds to escape, murders about 400 rebel soldiers, and deletes a bunch of key intelligence that they really, really needed. Then she ejects out and rejoins the Empire. She deliberately got herself captured so she could do all that. Less than one month later in the game time, the rebels get a message from Aiden saying, We surrender. And at no point does somebody think, hmm, maybe that girl who, you know, deliberately got herself captured last month and proceeded to murder half our fleet could be faking it again. Hello. No. No one thinks that. Instead, they decide she's absolutely trustworthy. And not only do they take her onto the ship, they free her. They're like, yeah, of course we trust you. You know, what, what, have, you do what have you done that would make us not trust you? You know, you seem like a great person. They free her and they let her join in on their next mission. I'm sorry. I just, the, the game was great. The game was fun. I had a blast. But that one thing just, just messed with me beyond all belief. My God, please, someone help me. You really trust us to fight beside you? What can I say? I'm a big believer in second chance. But either way, the campaign was a really welcome addition to the Battlefront franchise. It was a really big thing missing from the last game. And I'm so happy that they actually did something for this time round. Because it really just makes it feel like a full, complete package. Either way, guys, the game comes out today but either way guys thank you so much for watching i know i don't re do reviews very often and i know i'm probably not that good at them but i hope you enjoyed and i will see you legends in the next one bye bye